Hi everyone, this is Dr. Anime Shaha and today we will be discussing about stomach cancer. So cancer that develops within the lining of stomach is called stomach cancer. It is also called a gastric cancer. Stomach cancer is the fifth most common cancer worldwide and fourth most common cause of cancer related death. So in 2020, there are about 1.09 million new cancer cases of stomach cancer worldwide, which accounts for about 6% of all cancer. And there are about 0.77 million deaths from stomach cancer, which accounts for roughly about 8% of all cancer death. In India, stomach cancer is the third most common cancer in males which accounts for 6.3% of all cancer in males. In India, in 2020, there are about 60,000 new cases of stomach cancer with 53,000 deaths. So, a number one cause of stomach cancer uh, is the environmental risk factor. So, diet low in vitamin A and vitamin C uh, low socioeconomic status, diet rich in salty or smoked food, nitrites, uh, previous history of radiation exposure at a younger age are all environmental factors which can contribute to development of stomach cancer. Number two is Helicobacter pyrily, pylori infection. Helicobacter pylori is basically a bacterial infection. Persistence of this infection has been shown to increase the risk of stomach cancer by three to four, six fold. And number three is inflammation. A pre-malignant condition often called a Barrett esophagus, which is often related to obesity, uh, smoking, uh, GRD or reflux diseases uh, can contribute to the development of stomach cancer. Number four is immunological causes. Presence of pernicious anemia has been shown to increase the risk of uh, stomach cancer by threefold. Number five is genetic factor. CDH1 mutation uh, has been shown to be associated with 80% cases of stomach cancer. Apart from that, familial adenomatous polyposis, hereditary non polyposis colon cancer, Liu Freemini syndrome, BRCA2, all this genetic condition has been shown to be associated with development of stomach cancer. Some studies show that diet rich in vitamins and minerals, particularly vitamin A and C, can reduce the risk of stomach cancer. Aspirin have also been shown to be protective against stomach cancer. Blood group O has been shown to be protective against stomach cancer. On the contrary, blood group A patients are more likely to develop stomach cancer. The common symptoms of stomach cancer include a lack of appetite, weight loss, early satiety, abdominal discomfort, abdominal lump or mass, uh, blood vomiting, difficulty in swallowing, uh, blackish stool, uh, lump in neck, etc. Whenever a patient with suspected stomach cancer comes to us, we uh, take a detailed history of the patient, we examine the patient, we ask for routine blood test. Uh, along with that, sometimes we ask for a tumor marker called CEA. Most patients will have undergone uh, uh, upper GI endoscopy and a guided biopsy. This is done to confirm the diagnosis of cancer. Sometimes we advise endoscopic ultrasound in early stages of stomach cancer. Once the diagnosis of stomach cancer is established, we ask for a CT scan of chest, abdomen, pelvis to check for local extent of the disease and uh, to check for any cancer spread to distant organs. Sometimes patients might need whole body PET CT scan. And in selected cases, we ask for a laparoscopy uh, to check for uh, any cancer spread within the abdomen. 
based on the tumor extent uh, spread of the cancer to lymph node or distant organ uh, stomach cancer can be divided into four stages stage one to stage four Uh, surgery is the primary treatment for stomach cancer which has not spread to distant organ and we often ask for chemotherapy before and after surgery which is now the standard of care and has been shown to be uh, a promising treatment approach. Sometimes after surgery patient might need radiotherapy to reduce the risk of recurrence. When radiotherapy is contemplated uh, intensity modulated radiotherapy which is also called IMRT or uh, VMAT or RapidArc. Uh, this technique has shown to be precise in targeting the cancer and sparing the surrounding organ and thus it reduces the side effect from radiotherapy. In advanced stages patients are usually treated with a chemotherapy and targeted therapy. Sometimes patients are needed uh, palliative radiotherapy for symptom control like pain or bleeding. Thank you for watching.